One person should be designated to operate the baler control levers, monitor hydraulic pressure, and oversee all that's going on. This person is in charge and thus must be thoroughly familiar with baler operations and idiosyncrasies. For safety reasons, it's good practice for helpers to step back away from the baler whenever the operator is standing at the controls. Everybody stand clear! Seeing the operator at the controls is a signal that something is about to move. The first step the operator takes is to raise the plunger to its maximum height by moving the plunger control lever, the lever on the far left of the control box to its up position. After putting the lever in the up position, the operator should not need to continue to hold it there. A detent valve is intended to automate the upward movement of the plunger until it reaches its maximum height and returns to neutral. However, the detent valves are finicky and don't always work properly. If the detent is not working, the operator should simply hold the lever in position manually. The operator can always stop the upward movement of the plunger by moving the control lever back into neutral. With the plunger at its maximum height, there is adequate space for loading plastic into the baler. Next, the operator uses the middle control lever to open the baler door. While the baler door is open and before any plastic is loaded into the compaction chamber, check that the ejection feet at the bottom of the chamber are fully retracted and flush with the baler floor, and that the wire guide channels are completely clear of debris. Then lay a flat sheet of plastic film on the bottom of the compaction chamber and save a comparable piece to finish the top side of the bale. Use plastic that is white on at least one side and lay the sheet so the white side is facing down. The reasons for doing this are that the flat sheet provides a clear white surface for writing a label. It prevents small pieces of plastic from being jammed into the wire tracks or squeezed out the edges of the bale. It keeps the bale intact and keeps the plastic inside the bale cleaner and drier during storage. Avoid using bale wrap as the top and bottom layers because it tends to billow out of the compaction chamber and get caught in the wire channels. Instead use plastic cut from a silage bag, bunker silo, or greenhouse cover, a tarp, or even cardboard for the top and bottom pieces. After laying the bottom sheet, push the door shut, then latch the door by moving the hydraulic door lever into the down position. It is the operator's responsibility to check that the baler door is securely latched with the door latch hooks flush on the metal latch pins. If the baler has been equipped with a safety backup system for the door latch, the operator must be sure that the safety lock is engaged. A great deal of pressure is put on the door during compaction, so if the door is not latched securely, it could fly open, causing significant injury. As a precaution, all helpers should stay well clear of the door while plastic is being compressed. In fact, helpers should be well clear of the door any time the operator is at the controls. Once the door is securely latched, two or three people can load the plastic. A key to successful and effective bailing is having plastic that's been prepared for recycling. The training module, Preparing Plastic for Recycling, illustrates recommended practices. The quick summary is that plastic should be as clean and dry as possible and kept away from mud and gravel. Large sheets of film should be cut into sections and rolled into bundles about the size of a large pillow. With properly prepared bundles of film, a full 1,000-pound bale can be made in about half an hour. Fill the compaction chamber by piling the bundles of plastic as high as possible. Take care that loose film does not dangle near the control box where it could get caught in the levers, activating the door and locking mechanism or setting the plunger in motion. Also take care to prevent a bundle of plastic from falling on the control levers, which could cause the same problems. As a preventative measure, RAP has attached a shield to cover the control box on most of the balers operated under its auspices. The shield also protects the controls from rain and snow. Load only the one type of material being baled. Anything else is considered a contaminant. For example, cut off string that may have been used to tie the bundles.